We have a new hero pet, the Angry Jelly, which is unlocked at Town Hall 16, and it's going to make heroes super broken. I'll be sharing gameplay and tell you all of the strategies that you need to know. Let's start by unlocking the new pet and giving you its stats. At Town Hall 16, you will be able to take your pet house to level 10. To upgrade the pet house to level 10, it will cost you 21.5 million elixir with a 16 day build time, which will unlock you the level 1 angry jelly. Its special ability is called Brainwash. It will force its hero to target defenses for a while after being deployed. While this ability is active, the angry jelly will not be able to be targeted or will not trigger any traps. This does last for a limited time though, unlike most hero pets as they last for the whole duration. If your hero does die though, or time expires with the ability, the angry jelly will go on its own like a normal troop. Now, upgrading it through the 10 levels for the Angry Jelly is going to cost you well over 2 million Dark Elixir to upgrade. However, there are some key upgrade points that you want to get to, such as level 5 where you gain an extra 5 seconds for a total of 30 seconds, and level 10 where you can get an additional 5 seconds for a total of 35. Keep in mind that you can always use a Hero Potion to max this pet for an hour if you, wanna, um, if you just unlocked it and you want to try it. Now let's talk mechanics of the new pet before we get into any strategies. This pet will basically force any of your heroes to target defenses only for a limited amount of time. This does include targeting onto walls if there is a defense out of reach or if I guess if you're the warden just hop over them. But once the ability expires, heroes affected by this pet will go back to targeting anything. However, underneath the effects of this pet, skeleton traps enemy CC troops and enemy heroes can still be targeted. However, if your hero dies with the angry jelly, it will not switch to a new hero and will go about being a new, a normal troop. In this case, it can be targeted and can lure traps in this state. While this pet is latched to a hero though, it cannot be targeted by anything which includes the air defenses and cannot pull things like seeking air mines or other traps. This is perfect to pair with multiple heroes that get close to air defenses. Speaking of which, there are three heroes that this works incredibly well with and one hero that it's super useless with. Now let's get the one hero that's terrible on out of the way, the Royal Champion. The ability has no effect on the Royal Champion. She is already a defense targeting hero, so it will basically just increase the amount of damage that she deals because they'll work hand in hand, but also because you don't have the Spirit Fox or Diggy, you're taking more damage. There are just better options for the Angry Jelly on the King, Queen, or Grand Warden. Starting with the Barbarian King, pairing the Angry Jelly with him is really, really strong and very, very flexible. Since the main thing for the King is either funneling or clearing out an entire compartment, this is perfect for the pet to synergize with him, especially with its synergy with the giant gauntlet, as it's able to clear a massive area and it only focuses on defenses. Due to the gauntlet's splash and massive damage output thanks to the rage vial, this combo is now a no-brainer to run as it can just tear through buildings and defenses, making it extremely easy for you to get a ton of value with the king. The Archer Queen can also utilize the new pet due to its powerful ability to force her to target defenses. Not only that, it can't be targeted, which makes it perfect to use in either a Queen Charge, Recall, Queen Walk, or even Sui Hero. It's really good though for Queen Charge attacks as you now really don't need to do any funneling outside of getting rid of defenses to force her to go in the right direction. This can save you more troops to use for your main attack rather than using them for funneling. This can also be good in recall attacks where you want to force your queen to get into a certain area and then recall her out. This is going to make this far more consistent and she can also basically avoid any of the trash buildings. As for a Sui hero, this makes it incredibly easy for her to clear out multiple buildings as long as she's being tanked for, and she can very much utilize the healer puppets to take full advantage of the new pet. 
However, my personal favorite is using it with the Grand Warden. While this doesn't really work that well with the Air Warden, a Ground Warden, especially when you're using Warden Walks, is where you can get the best value from this. If you're doing a Warden Charge with the Fireball, it can be incredibly strong. You can now have a lot more control with the Fireball's pathing since you're now going from defense to defense, making things like using Overgrowth, Invisibility, or using none of those and just having an Earthquake spell for that Fireball really helps so you'll want to upgrade that fireball especially if you are at town hall 16. my personal hero pack combo for this will be usually the barbarian king for its really strong utility or with the archer queen in either queen charge or recall queen walk armies or if you have the fireball close to maxed or maxed out, this pet will work incredibly well with the Grand Warden. Now that's not all though, we have new troop and defense levels coming in this next update. As you already know, the new clan castle is getting a brand new level, which unlocks the second seed machine spot. This is gonna cost you 21 million elixir with a 15 and a half day build time. As for defenses, the Monolith is going to level 3. It will gain an additional 18 base damage, an extra 303 HP, and an increase to its extra damage by 1% for a total of 13%. Next up is the Builder Hut. This gets a nice design that fits Town Hall 16, but it will gain an additional 100 HP, an extra 15 DPS, and will have its healing increase by 5 for a total of 85 healing per second. This will definitely make certain things harder, especially if you're using Earthquake spells and you are a bit slow on your deployment. The Eagle Artillery is going to level 7. It's gaining an additional 300 HP and an extra 25 DPS, and its Shockwave damage is also being increased by 5. Let's turn our attention over to the lab for additional troop and siege machine levels. First things first, you might have noticed the Yeti is getting a new level to level 6. It's getting an extra 200 HP and an additional 20 damage per second while also getting an additional Yeti Might. This is going to be great for Yeti Bombs, especially if you're at a lower town level. Another tank that's going to see a ton of use is the Electro Titan, as it's going to level 4. It's going to also gain an extra 200 HP and an extra 20 DPS while also getting its aura DPS increased by 12. This was already a strong tank, so it's going to be even stronger and super viable with it, even at Tunnel 16. The Ice Golem is also going to level 8. It's getting an additional 300 HP with only a damage increase by 4, but its freeze upon its death is being increased by 0.5 seconds. This does not apply though to the defensive freeze. The Flame Flinger is also getting an additional level to level 5. This will give the Flame Flinger an additional 100 HP, an increased fire DPS by 10, an extra 14 DPS, and its lifetime is being increased by about 6 seconds. If it wasn't strong already, it's going to be super strong. Overall, that's everything coming in the next update. I know it is a small update, but I hope you guys have a lot of fun with all of the new stuff and quality of life changes. Be sure to check out my video though if you are looking for rocket balloon strategies to use during the rocket loon spotlight event.